Welcome to all of you who may be gathered here and to those who will watch this live recording. I welcome you to the next 30 minutes, a spiritual soiree where we come in the name of love and we come to reawaken our heart to a loving, living, vibrating Father, Mother, God. But first, let us enjoy the beautiful music from Shiannon All as she sings, You Can Relax Now. Beautiful. When she says, you can relax now. And in the background, you can hear a faint voice say, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. So we welcome you, dear friends, to this time of just being still. Being still in the presence of all that is. But first, we light a candle for peace. For without peace, life isn't really worth living, is it? So it's important that we pray for peace and that we remember our brothers and sisters around the world who are searching for peace, who are struggling for peace. So we light this flame and we dedicate it to the mystical heart of God. And in the name of the Spirit of God, we come, we come in love to embrace the cosmic Christ Jesus, to embrace Mother Mary and all of the ascended masters, our teachers. And we call on the company of heaven to bring us closer closer to the mystical heart of a loving, compassionate God. And in that stillness, we give thanks. <clears throat> we give thanks for our blessings of this day. We give thanks for all that happens in our life. We bless every eventuality. We bless everything. And we just come now into the presence of love. Let us relax and experience the gentleness of a loving God and a loving earth mother who cared deeply for their children. Let us switch off the mind and let us come and reawaken our heart, our teacher, to what the voice of the master is saying to us. And we do that by taking a nice, deep, non-labored in-breath 
And now we release whatever ails us or is aching within us and we give it to our beloved Earth Mother Gaia. And as we breathe in again, let us sense the peace of God and in our out breaths, let us welcome that peace for that peace is so important for us for without peace there is chaos and as we breathe normally now let us just become aware of the peace of God coming upon us just like standing in a shower the peace of God is flowing down upon us and it's empowering us to be still, to relax, and to experience the presence of the Christ, our teacher, our brother, our friend. So just relax now. And again, we use our gift of free will and we invite, we invoke and we ask the company of heaven, the messengers of God, to prepare this session and to allow us here in our heart to hear and sense the word of the Christ. But first I want to share with you two quotes from His Holiness the Dalai Lama from a wonderful little book. The Little Book of Wisdom. It was a Christmas present and it's so beautiful. <clears throat> His Holiness says, the external world reflects our inner realities. The well-being of society depends upon the internal attitude of the people who compose it. Let's read that again. The well-being of society depends upon the internal attitude of the people who compose it. What a beautiful quote and so, so true. But then he talks about the ingredients for peace. Through kindness, through mutual understanding and through mutual respect, we will get peace. We will get happiness and we will get genuine satisfaction. Through kindness, through mutual understanding and through mutual respect, we will get peace. We will get happiness and we will get genuine satisfaction. And that really sums it up, doesn't it? About sharing your love, about sharing who you are, about coming into the presence of God and knowing that nothing can alienate us, segregate or separate us because we are part of the divine oneness. So let us come, let us be still, and let us embrace that peace. Let us be still now. And 
as we sit here quietly in our sanctuary, we know that we were brought here by the Spirit of God who prompted us to reconnect with our brothers and sisters around the world and to sit in their energy for all of us together as one to sit in the presence of God and to hold the light of the cosmic Christ and to just receive, receive his love. Let us be still now. I am getting in my heart a strong sensation to share these words and I'm going to honor what my heart is given. I am the way. There is no other way. I am your truth. There can be no other truth. And I am love. I am love. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. I am the light of the world. And I come and I touch you now. And I fill you with the peace of God. But are you receptive to that peace? Are you receptive to my love? Or are you still chasing dreams when the dream is within you? The dream has become a reality when you've surrendered your heart to my love. For I am your love and you are my love. Come, take up your cross. Take up the struggles that overwhelm you and bring them to me. But first I ask you to acknowledge them for they are yours. I ask you to bless them and now I ask you to release them, to release them to my love. Just reflect on those words that I shared with you, that the Christ is the way, the truth and the life. This is the dawn of Aquarius, Christ consciousness, the cosmic Christ. This is he who calls you, allow him touch you, allow him place his hand on your heart and set you free, and set you free. And I'm guided to read for our reflection this evening, concluding with the meditation. At this moment, I have no idea what the meditation will be because my heart is open, but I want to share this with you. And it's from the fifth mansion by the beautiful trees of Avila, from the interior castle. 
dissolving into holiness from silkworm to butterfly. Oh friends, how could I ever describe the riches, the treasures and delights to be found inside the fifth dwelling? There is no way of knowing how to talk about such things. Teresa of Avila. <clears throat> In the Hindu tradition, the greatest mystical poet of South India, Maniki Kavakakar, went to live in a temple after a lifetime of serving Shiva through poetry. There he was rewarded by a blinding illumination of divine light into which he is said to have merged and then vanished. Ignatius of Loyola had a profound conversion experience in which his senses, his will, and all the ambitions that he had held for himself as a young man dissolved into spiritual pursuits. Before his conversion, he was a soldier with dreams of accomplishing fame and glory through war and had to be saved twice by interventions of the Blessed Mother. But he was greatly injured, gravely injured in battle and almost died. During his long recovery, Ignatius passed the time by reading and also in erotic fantasies of a noble woman whose company he desired but could not attain. Although he'd asked for romances and dramatic stories, all that was available in the house where he was confined were the books on the life of Christ and the saints. He discovered that his erotic fantasies left him completely dissatisfied, while his spiritual thoughts brought him peace. The readings awakened his brilliance for what would become his trademark for spiritual discernment. And he was told in prayer that he was to serve God and bring back an ancient order and practice of devotion. In this pursuit, in his spiritual exercises, Ignatius dissolved fully into the union of his soul with the divine. <clears throat> Dissolving into holiness means to merge without boundaries into divine consciousness. Teresa described this transformation from body to soul as turning from a silkworm into a butterfly. This can happen within the context of your contemporary life as the soul becomes on fire and dissolves much of the ego's familiar landscape. This final release of the ego's hold on you is like a silkworm breaking out of its confining cocoon and lifting into flight as a beautiful butterfly. Isn't that beautiful? This mystical experience is enabled and encompassed by a state of consciousness that Teresa calls the prayer of union, which she compares to the sacrament of marriage. In this mansion you assume a conscious relationship with timelessness. You no longer doubt your mystical experiences and dialogue with the divine. You now know the interior of your soul and your way around the castle. You know your way to God. How beautiful is that? You know your way to God. The castle is no longer an exercise of the mind and imagination. 
it is part of you. Let us reflect now. We are sat at this table and we are relaxed because we know having surrendered our heart, our fear, our dreams, our fantasies, we are at this table and we have embraced divine oneness. And in the very center of this table, there is a candle burning and we're guided to watch the flame. Visualize the flame. It is rather a large flame and it's now manifesting beautiful colors like the rainbow. And the color we see now is indigo blue. And from this color, we sense a presence appearing. And it is the Christ. It is the Christ. And he calls you to come closer and to take the candle and to hold it in your hands. And he says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. I commissioned you. I anointed you. And though many have been anointed and commissioned, you have stayed. You have not run away. Many have run away like the rich young man who found it difficult to give away his possessions and come follow me. But you are here. Because you have found me and I have found you. And I want you to hold this light as my light. I want you to become an extension of my love for you. I want you to be my hands and my feet. And I want the flame to represent my love for you and your love for me to shine ever so brightly. Be still and know that God is love. Be still and know that you are love. And the flame that you hold in your hand is the eternal flame of my love for you. It is a love that will never quench. You have the power to put the flame out. And many have put it out because of fear. Because of dancing with two extremes. Of wanting to combine the mystical past with the world and its ideologies. But to follow me, you have to renounce yourself. You have to renounce your dreams. You have to renounce your will and surrender to love. And in surrendering, you are given the greatest gift. the greatest gift being eternal life and that I will walk with you that I will treasure your love and that I will never abandon you 
So when you look at this candle and hold it firmly in your hand, look at the flame. And that flame is my love for you. And your love for me. Embrace the flame and allow it cleanse you of all fear and doubt and allow your heart come closer to my love come closer to my love and this is what I share with you for this new day the 26th of January Give up the illusion that you deserve a problem-free life. Part of you is still hungering for the resolution of all difficulties. This is a false hope. As I told my disciples, in the world you will have trouble. Link your hope not to the problem solving in this life, but to the promise of an eternity of problem-free life in heaven. Instead of seeking perfection in this fallen world, pour your energy into seeking me, the perfect one. It is possible to enjoy me and glorify me in the midst of adverse circumstances. In fact, my light shines most brightly through believers who trust me, who trust me in the dark. That kind of trust is supernatural, a production of my indwelling spirit within you. When things seem all wrong, trust me anyway. I am much less interested in right circumstances than in right responses to whatever comes your way. And we give thanks to the Cosmic Christ for speaking to our hearts. Now we reflect, we embrace, and in the stillness of this moment, the Cosmic Christ performs a sacred symbol on our third eye. And that symbol is known only to you and me. It is the sacred symbol of the ictus, the fish. suddenly you become aware of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into your life, bringing you back into alignment with your heart. And there is absolute peace right now. And with every in-breath that you breathe, you sense a shift of consciousness coming back to your child within, where there is love, where there is acceptance, and where there is joy. open your eyes and you look all around you and you can see little lights flickering in your room. They are what we call elementals, little beings of love come to overshadow you and protect you. Be still now. 
and embrace all that you are as a child of God, as a beloved of the Christ who calls you to love. Be still and stay with those feelings of love. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for allowing me into your space. And when you hit those dark times, those troubling days ahead, or if there's anxiety in your life, light that candle, hold it in your hand, and look at the flame, and let it remind you of now. The flame represents the love of the Christ for you. And your love for the Christ. Shalom. Inshallah paxet bonum. Om shanti. Solo di caritas. Peace. God bless you. Be at peace.